In our last episode, we slaughtered the aliens in their own living quarters. After clearing that level of the ship, we found a teleporter to the bridge. This is where we must now go to confront the captain. On the other side of the teleporter, we find ourselves in a small room. We see a door to the left with a button, but the button appears to have no effect. But peering out the nearby window, we can taunt the aliens on the bridge to open the door for us. On the body of the captain is a unique weapon, but we don't have time to talk about it now. For before we can loot him, that big, angry alien hologram head appears before us. Two more aliens teleport in behind us. And as soon as they die, our companions finally arrive. Holy shit, where did that come from? Looking out to space, we see another ship arrive above us. This appears to be a sister ship of Mothership Zeta. Oh no, we may have killed the captain, but now we've got to deal with this invader. Thankfully, Sally knows where to begin. Wow, this looks just like the bridge on Captain Cosmos. I know what to do. Soma, you go stand over there. Mr. Elliot, you're there. Paulson, you can be Jangles the Moon Monkey. And I get to aim the Death Ray! <laughs> I ain't no goddamn space monkey. Heading towards the controls, we can check in with Sally. Stella Skyfire reporting for duty! She's Captain Cosmo's second in command, at least for the first few episodes. Can we hit that ship with our death ray? I think I have that ship targeted, but you'll have to find the firing control. All right, get a move on it. Aye, aye. Look, that must be the captain's chair. You should sit there. You can be Captain Cosmos. It looks like they're dropping shields to prepare for a big shot. We destroyed the death ray of this spaceship, so we must be using an alternative backup death ray, because with these controls, we can fire it at the invader. The alien spaceship rocks us with volley after volley. Directly in front of us, we see the fire button. We know that our death ray is fully charged and ready when we see the blue hologram of a death ray hovering over the hologram of the alien ship. The alien ship hologram also tells us important information. The Wi-Fi broadcast signal at the top actually tells us which level the enemy's shields are at. One line is lowest, two lines is medium, three lines means that their maximum shields are deployed. And above that is a health meter, with four quadrants telling us how close we are to destroying the ship. To the left, we find the controls for Mothership Zetas, Shields, and Death Ray. Initially, we see that the middle button is depressed. This gives us medium shields and gives our Death Ray medium power. If we press the button to the far left, this raises our shields to maximum, but weakens our Death Ray to its lowest setting. And if we press the button on the far right, this weakens our shields to the lowest setting, but maximizes power to our death ray, causing it to hit harder. I've got a lock on their ship. Fire when ready. To fire, we tag the big button before us. But periodically during our space fight, the alien ship will teleport aliens onto the bridge. We only have Paulson here defending us, and he can become easily overwhelmed. We must therefore periodically stand from the controls and help Paulson. With the bridge clear, we can check in with Soma at the controls. What do you need? What does this thing do? Hmm, looks like I'm at the helm. I'll have these controls figured out in no time at all. All right, get a move on it. Got it. Heading on over to Elliot. Sir? What have you got there, Elliot? Oh man, I don't know. A teleport jammer, maybe? Right, spaceships have those, don't they? Yeah, sure. A teleport jammer. All right, get a move on it. Yes, sir. Checking in with Paulson after our first wave. Eh? How you holding up, Paulson? I could use one of those stim packs if you don't mind. Sure, bud, here you go. Now get a move on it. Eh? He'll use the stim packs we give him. It's important to keep him supplied throughout the remainder of this battle. Sitting back down in the captain's chair, we can again fire the death ray at the enemy's ship. I 
never thought I'd get to do something like this. But then the power goes out. Shit, they hit the core and sapped out power. Look around for some buttons or something to restart the generators. And just as we stand up, more aliens teleport to the bridge. ship's half dead, and if that death ray isn't online soon, we're dead right along with it. With the bridge secure, we now have to restart the generators. To do so, we tag a generator control button to the left of the captain's chair. That looks like it's working. Keep up whatever you're doing. We have to restart four generators, so after tagging the next button, we then walk to the opposite side of the bridge to punch the final two. With that, the lights come back on as we sit back down in the captain's chair. The key here is to time our attacks appropriately. We need to make sure that our shields are set to maximum. Immediately after they hit us, we reduce power to the shields and set the death rate to maximum power. Then we hit the enemy. After we land a strike, we divert power back to the shields in preparation for the next enemy attack. Then we just rinse and repeat. Shields up, enemy attacks. Shields down, we attack. Shields up. During a lull in the action, we can check in with the crew to see how everyone's doing. How are you holding up, Sergeant? I have these buttons pointing at that big blob. I think that's right. Status report? Who the hell knows? These controls are just a mess. How's the jammer holding? It's holding fine for now, I guess. It should help with the bastards teleporting onto the ship. Wait, did anyone hear that? A little busy here, darling. What did you hear, Sally? Oh, it's the samurai! We should let him in. Fine, let the Chinaman in. Could use his arm in here if it gets rough. Actually, I think he's from Japan. As you say, kindly invite the oriental gentleman with the sword to join us. Now! Sally runs over to operate the door control. Hello, Samurai! Glad you're still alive. Toshiro joins us just in the nick of time for immediately afterwards we get attacked by a swarm of heavily armored aliens. This will likely kill Paulson if he's by himself, but Toshiro cuts through these aliens like a hot knife through butter. When the bridge is secure, we can sit back down in the captain's chair just in time to fire off another volley. But then... They hit something big! Shields and Elliot are down! Elliot's control is completely destroyed. We can no longer block them from teleporting aliens onto the bridge, and so he pulls out his rifle to help Paulson and Toshiro. 70%. We need to end this fast. We're trying to end it fast, but with Elliot's console destroyed, we get rushed by wave after wave of aliens. We have to fire off a shot, raise our shields, and then race back to help our companions. Oh, God damn it! Push this, it doesn't do anything. I push that, it doesn't... Oh hey, that did something. The aliens continue to rock our ship, but our shields buy us time. Yeah, teach them a lesson. 20% and plummeting. We're losing systems like crazy. Damn it, their shields are back up at max. We recover from a blast just in time to stand up and find aliens on the bridge. One of you. If I go, you're coming with me. Racing back to the captain's control, we can fire off a shot. Before sitting back down in our chair. Why won't you work? This is like playing a hollow game, only better. Oh, but they teleport more behind us. I got something special for you. If we leave repelling the aliens solely up to our companions, they're likely to die. So we have no choice but to abandon the controls and fight off the invaders.
Now it is possible to lose this battle. If we were too aggressive and we sent maximum power to the death ray at the expense of the shields, or if we were too timid and we sent maximum power to the shields at the expense of the death ray, then it's possible that the invading ship could destroy us. But if we time everything just right, the invading ship explodes in a huge ball of gas. We complete the quest, this galaxy ain't big enough, and its burning wreckage falls slowly to Earth. When we've finished gazing at the spectacle, we can check in with Sally. Yeah! We won! I knew we could do it! I knew we could beat them! You're even better than Captain Cosmos! Thanks for all your help, Sally. We couldn't have done it without you. I know. And you're very welcome. What will you do now? I think I'm going to stay here for a while. I don't think I like it much down there anymore. And there's still a bunch of the ship I haven't seen. I'll tell you what. If I find anything really neat, I'll bring it to you. Okay? We find Soma gazing at the sight. Nice work, kid. If there's more of them out there, that'll make them think twice about attacking us again. And it looks like you're in charge of your very own spaceship. Well, it's left of it anyway. Congrats. Thanks for your help, Soma. Couldn't have done it without you. That's right. If it weren't for me, you'd be sitting in a holding cell or lying on some crazy operating table right now. You owe me big time, kid. What will you do now? I'm gonna see about getting off this thing. Head back to the wasteland with some new toys, maybe carve out a place for myself. Literally, if I have to. Odds are we won't be bumping into each other again, so I just wanted to say thanks. This has been one hell of a ride, hasn't it? Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Not really something I'm interested in doing again. I'll be going then. Sure thing. So Soma plans to go back to Earth. Now we recall that at various points throughout this adventure, we learn that Soma is a bit ashamed of her past, and that's because she's a slaver from Paradise Falls. The Fallout 3 official strategy guide tells us this. With this knowledge, some of her previous comments make more sense, like her comment about irony when we first met her, and the guilt she expressed in her abduction holotape. Knowing that she's a Paradise Falls slaver, this is our last opportunity to kill her. Perhaps by killing her, we would be doing the world a favor. But I like to think that this whole experience has taught Soma a valuable lesson. After all, she didn't attack us when she found us naked and helpless beside her in the holding cell. And she encouraged us and worked hard alongside us throughout this entire ordeal. So I left her alive, and I like to think that she goes back to Earth a little bit wiser, a little bit more mature, and chooses to live her life as an ethical mercenary or scavenger, instead of going back to the slave pens at Paradise Falls. We can then check in with Elliot. We did it! We really did it! Oh man, I can't believe it! I never thought we'd make it. You're the best, the absolute best. I'd be dead without you, or worse. Thank you so much. Thanks for your help, Elliot. Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, come on. We both know you could have. What will you do now? I don't know. I don't really have a place down there anymore, do I? It doesn't sound like it'd suit me very well. Think I'll stick around here for a while. See if I can't figure out some of this technology. Do you think they'll ever come back? Boy, I sure hope not. But at least we know what to do with them, right? All right, I'll be going. We'll be here if you need us. Checking in with Paulson. So, it's done. I'm not much for talking. So I'll get to it. I owe you. Without you, I'd be dead. Or worse. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna see if I can find a way off this thing. And that's it. We do not find an opportunity to try to convince him to stay. But then Elliot finds something. Hey, I thought you should know, someone must have hit a button during the fight just now. If I understood the display correctly, I think we sort of launched a homing beacon of some kind down to the surface. Landed just outside DC. I wouldn't mention it, except that I think... Like I said, I'm not sure. I think it's a way to get back to Earth. Seems like there's a teleporter in the captain's quarters. I mean, I guess they're your quarters now. So I, I guess you can go home if you want. 
Oh, don't worry. I'll stick around up here and keep an eye on things. We learn later that the person who pushed the button was none other than Sally. Hey, guess what? You can go home! I was looking at the controls on the bridge here, and most of it doesn't make any sense to me because it's in that weird alien language. But there's this one thing I saw, and I think maybe I accidentally pushed a button while we were fighting that big ship. And I think maybe the button I pushed sent some kind of a thing back down to Earth. I didn't mean to, honest. But this is a good thing. I think now you can use the teleporter in the captain's quarters to get back to Earth. Pretty great, isn't it? Anyway, I just thought I should tell you. Toshiro has many different things to say. Checking in with him... Peering out the window, we see the remains of the burning alien ship falling towards Earth. It disappears, and I think it burns up in the atmosphere before hitting the planet. On this lower level by the observation windows, we find two chests, one on either side of the stairs. We can now go back upstairs and loot the corpse of Mothership Zeta's captain. On his corpse, we find alien power modules and cells, and the unique weapon, Alien Captain's Sidearm. The Alien Captain's Sidearm uses alien power modules, not power cells, unlike other alien blasters. Also unlike alien blasters, it shoots out energy like a shotgun. Every time we pull the trigger, it shoots six beams at the cost of three rounds. So it does burn through alien power modules. Like the Metal Blaster from the Pit DLC and like Paulson's Revolver, each of the six energy beams has the chance to land a critical strike on the enemy, which means characters with high luck and high critical chance are likely to land multiple crits with each attack. But this chance only works outside of vats. Inside of vats, you can only land one critical strike. It does the exact same amount of damage as the alien atomizer, 35, split between six beams, but it has way more spread than the alien atomizer, with a spread of whopping 3.0 compared to the alien atomizer's zero. This is, of course, because it's practically a shotgun. When done exploring the bridge, we can see if we can find that teleporter in the captain's quarters that Sally talked about. Heading to the far southern part of the ship, we find the captain's quarters and a teleportation matrix to the capital wasteland. We arrive right next to an alien homing beacon. This must be the beacon that both Sally and Elliot told us they accidentally launched from the ship. We find ourselves in that same crash site that we stumbled upon so many days ago. The wrecked alien ship is of course gone. We saw the aliens pick it up and put it in the hangar. But if we walk over this big mound of garbage, we see that the aliens left behind the corpse of the ship's pilot. And on the ground next to him, we find a whole bunch of alien power cells and a unique weapon, the Alien Blaster. The Alien Blaster was available in the base game of Fallout 3, but after installing Mothership Zeta, we don't get it until after this DLC, so I'm going to cover it as part of the DLC. The Alien Blaster is one of the most powerful weapons in the game because each shot is a guaranteed critical hit. The critical percent multiplier for this weapon is 100, making it impossible to not land a critical hit. It does electrical damage, like Jingwei's shock sword and the captain's sidearm, and has a base damage of 100, which is huge, much larger than any other weapon we find in this DLC. It has an action point cost of 20, bringing the damage per action point up to five, deals 100 critical damage, bringing its DPS up to 300. The drawback to this weapon is that it uses alien power cells, a much more rare ammunition. This is why I made such a big deal about finding all of the alien power cells on Mothership Zeta. We can walk away with thousands upon thousands of alien power modules, the ammunition used for all other weapons on the Mothership, but there is a maximum of 1,152 alien power cells in the entire game including all expansions. 362 in the base game, 365 on Mothership Zeta, and 425 with broken steel installed. So this weapon is best used for special occasions. 
We also notice that we find a new fast travel icon on our Pip-Boy. The alien homing beacon now has its own icon. If we fast travel back here, we can activate the alien homing beacon at any time to travel back to Mothership Zeta. The next time we arrive at the ship, we can talk to Sally. Hey Sally, do you have anything to report? Oh yeah! Here, you can have this stuff. I found it when I was looking around the rest of the ship. We can do this every day or so, and she'll give us a random alien item she found on the ship. So how's life in space? Pretty neat. I'm still exploring some of the rest of the ship using the vents. There's a bunch of places I never saw before. We can ask her this question a couple more times, and she has different responses. I saw a shooting star out the window! I'm okay. It's fun to just sit and look at the Earth sometimes. Hey Sally, where's Paulson? Oh, uh, he left. He used the teleporter after you did. He said he didn't have any reason to stay. But I don't know where he was going to go. I'm going to miss him. He was quiet. But I think it's because he was really sad. We can ask the same thing of Elliot. He took off just after you did. Said there was no reason for him to hang around here. That he might as well go see what it was like down there. I wasn't about to tell him he couldn't go. We can turn this ship upside down, but we never find Paulson. He left. He went back down to Earth. But he's a cowboy from another age. He's likely still devastated over the loss of his wife and child. It makes me worry about him. I wonder how he'll be able to survive in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. We never see him again. But I like to think that Paulson found peace and was able to find some sort of happiness with the rest of his life. Who knows? Maybe we'll see him again someday. We discover that Elliot can give us a random alien weapon once a day. Hey, I could use some more of those alien weapons. Do you have any? Yep, sure thing. And he continues to transform our alien biochel into advanced biochel. But sadly, he no longer makes cryo grenades or cryo mines for us. We see that the controls still work. We can fire the death ray, but thankfully it's pointed far off into space, so we can't strike Earth. And we see that Toshiro is sticking around. If we try to explore the rest of the ship, we find that most of it is locked to us. Heading through the door that Toshiro used to reach the bridge, we find a teleportation matrix to the living quarters, but we see that the teleporter is powered down. So turning around, we can head towards the captain's quarters. We find a teleportation matrix to the engineering core, and the only one left is the teleportation matrix to the capital wasteland. In the captain's quarters, we do find a weapons workbench and a stasis chamber, but this is really tiny. It's alien-sized and so we can't use it. If we activate the teleportation matrix to the engineering core, we find a few aliens remaining. We can now go around the engineering core and loot everything we missed. We can walk through the steamworks, which eventually brings us back to the holding cells, but sadly we can't access any other parts of the ship. This is why earlier in the DLC, I said that we should store everything that we want to keep here in the engineering core, because this is one of the few places we can come back and visit. Strangely enough, if we do visit the steamworks, upon returning to the bridge, we see that Toshiro has vanished. So if we want to keep him on the ship, we have to make sure to never enter the steamworks. I don't know why Bethesda made this choice, but thankfully there are plenty of mods out there that open up the ship, allowing us to explore it after completing the DLC. The one I used in my gameplay is All Access Pass Mothership Zeta by El Polo Azul. I link to it in the description below. With this mod installed, we can loot everything we missed and find all of the alien captive recorded logs we missed even after completing the primary quest in the game. And that is the full story of Mothership Zeta, our one and only up-close and personal encounter with aliens in the Fallout universe. We walk away from this experience with a treasure trove of new gear and a richer understanding of the Fallout universe. So what are your thoughts on Mothership Zeta? I had a blast with this DLC and had so much fun putting together this series for you. But I'd love to hear what you have to say, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I have one more episode in this series. In our next video, we're going to do a big video on all the loot. So if you missed any of the videos in this series or you weren't paying attention to the loot, don't worry. I'm going to cover each unique piece of loot that we get by playing Mothership Zeta in tomorrow's video. So stay tuned for that. I publish a whole bunch of videos each and every week here on my channel. So if you want to find out what I publish next, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. Cows. We've got cows. 
I tried to get this one done earlier so that I could show it off in my earlier videos, but hey, at least I got the shirt done before this series ended. We can celebrate the Zayton abduction of Brahman with the shirt that shows off the junk chute in the cargo hold. The design comes on shirts in a wide array of colors and in a variety of both men's and women's sizes. You can also get this design on a bunch of other stuff, mugs, posters, prints, pillows, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with episode 10.